I'm so excited, you guys. Today is a big video. I have a big announcement for you, but first, let's do some crafting. And what are we crafting with today? Dollar Tree planters. This is one of my absolute favorite things to get from Dollar Tree, and now with Dollar Tree Plus, you can get some really nice ones as well. So I'm gonna throw in a mix of both $1.25 planters and also some bigger, nicer versions in the Dollar Tree Plus section too. If you're new here, I wanna say hello and welcome. My name is Shannon, the Daily DIYer. If you're returning, thank you so much, my devoted DIYers, for always coming back and sharing some time with me. I'm excited to share this announcement with you, but first, let's dive right into the very first planter idea. First, you'll need to grab these bamboo rings from the Crafter Square. If you can't find them, no worries. You can also grab regular embroidery hoops. You're gonna need two packs, basically two of the larger ones and one of the smaller ones. We're also gonna be using some Dollar Tree jute. We're gonna be making a really quick and easy plant holder. And to do that, we're gonna put the smaller hoop inside the bigger hoop, take that jute and tie a very loose knot. You don't want anything too tight because we're gonna be adjusting here and there. Then you're gonna take some long tail of your jute and kind of wrap it around about an inch wide and then go back to the beginning and tie it off with that tail left over from the first knot that you made. And now you can see our plant holder starting to come together. The smaller hoop is gonna hold our plant and the bigger hoop is gonna be one of the sides of the hanger. We're gonna go ahead and repeat this process with the other larger hoop, so the same thing. We're gonna take our jew and we're going to attach the smaller hoop to the larger hoop, creating that loose knot, twisting the jute around about an inch wide or so. Coming back to the beginning, tying that off in a knot with the very first knot that we made. And now we have the two larger hoops connected to the smaller one in the middle, trim off those tails. And now the two larger hoops connect and touch at the top. So we're gonna take some more jute and we are going to wrap that around the top there. Same process, make it about an inch wide, come back to the beginning and tie off your knot so that way we have everything connected and combined. And then here is what our plant holder looks like, but we're not quite done yet. We need to add a hanger to the top and the top is gonna be where those two larger hoops meet in the middle. So we're gonna take some thicker jute for this. This is four ply jute. I get it for about five bucks at Walmart. I will link it down in the description box below along with all the other supplies you'll see in this video to make it easier for you to find so you can recreate them. We're just basically tying a knot onto the hoops and then tying a knot with the tails at the top and that makes a nice sturdy hanger for us to then add a plant to our hanger. Back inside Dollar Tree, I took these hoops over to the planter section to find the right size planter that would fit down into that smaller hoop there. This planter was a little bit big still, but it still kind of grabbed onto the smaller lower band. So it still really works. So it doesn't have to be the perfect size. You just wanna make sure that the edges catch on there so it doesn't fall all the way through. And then you could knock out some holes in the bottom of your planter and use it for live plants. Or you can do like I did and just throw a faux plant in there. Mine is from Ikea. I love them because they look really realistic and they don't die. I don't have the best green thumb anyway. So this looks really pretty inside or outdoors. You could stain it, you could paint it to match your style and decor too. All right, time for the big announcement. And I don't want to drag this on too, too long, but if you remember back about a month ago, I announced that I was launching a brand new free newsletter. So many of you signed up for that newsletter and I wanna thank you so, so much. The very first one had already launched with a freebie in it and I hope to do that more. So if you'd like to, I will put a link down in the description box. You can head over and sign up for that free newsletter. It'll give you all kinds of updates, some freebies thrown in there, and just some cool links and things that I find, just exclusive content that you're not gonna find anywhere else. The newsletter kind of segues into this big announcement, which is you can now visit the dailydiywire.com. I have been working on this project for months. Let me tell you, it is so much harder than crafting, building this website from the ground up but I am so proud of it and I'm so excited to invite all of you to come visit. This is gonna be a fun space to visit with all kinds of creative ideas from the daily DIYer world. It's kind of a place where you can go to see all of it from everything from social media, from Instagram, TikTok, from here on YouTube, from my newsletter. It's all gonna be a nice central hub with weekly new ideas. 
So right now the blog is filled with ideas from organization to crafting to seasonal ideas. So I have it filled with ideas for you already. So I hope you head over there after this video to go check it out. I want to thank every single one of you that has supported me along the way. This is just another part of this awesome DIY journey. And speaking of journeys, this channel started out a long time ago, over eight years ago now, as a woodworking slash crafting idea hub. However, I sort of got away from the woodworking side of things long ago. I had got the itch again. You guys told me you're looking for more wood projects, so I have one for you right now. However, no fear, this is a great beginner wood project. So first of all, welcome or welcome back if you are not new and you've been around a while to see some of the wood projects. It's been a while since I've been down here, but I was getting that itch to throw some more sawdust. So I went ahead, grabbed this pack of four small planters from Dollar Tree, and I'm starting with a scrap piece of one by six that was about 33 inches long. I spaced out my planters on this board to see how long I wanted to make the legs because we're going to make a little planter stand. So, so easy. We're going to measure two lengths at six inches long. Just using my miter saw here. If you don't have a miter saw, you can use a circular saw. You can use a hand saw. You can ask the hardware store to cut it down for you because basically all you have to do is make these two simple cuts. And then just to draw this out a little more clearly, you're going to need a one by six board cut down to one at 21 inches long and two at six inches long. Next, we're going to make some marks. I'm going to be cutting some holes in this board so the planners will sit down in them. So as a reference, I am measuring over three inches, then eight inches, 13 inches and 18 inches to be the center points of these pots and also the holes I'm going to need to drill. I also drew a line right down the center of the board and then took a hole saw on my drill to actually cut those holes out with. I will say this does take a little bit of patience and a little bit of muscle. So if you're a beginner, I would skip this step completely and I would just use it as a plant shelf because you can easily just set your planters right on top of this without drilling any holes. But if you're a little bit more seasoned and you have a hole saw on hand, it's really easy to use. It just takes some patience. So there's the drill bit right in the middle. That's where you're going to line up those marks that we made earlier. And you're going to drill down until the drill bit goes through the other side of the board. Then flip it over, put the drill bit back through that hole, and then drill the rest of your hole out of your board, as you can see here. And you just take that right out of there. And we have a hole in the middle of our board where we need it. Now, before moving on to the next hole, you do need to pop the wood out of the hole saw. Just take a screwdriver, it pops it right out of there. Then work your way down the board, cutting all four holes out. I had four planters, so we went with four holes. And as you can see, this is looking pretty cool already. Now we need to go ahead and sand all this down smooth, get all of the splinters off. I'm using a orbital sander and also 80 grit sandpaper to do the front, the back, the sides, and the ends of all of this. You can also just use regular sandpaper and hand sand everything. If you don't have a electric sander, you're gonna have to do that anyway to get the insides of those holes. So those are nice and smooth too. Now to put this all together, we're gonna be using a brad nailer and one and a quarter inch brad nails. And I went ahead and kind of mocked this up and measured down two and a quarter inches from the top of the board, marked that so I had a nice straight line that's gonna help us line these up kind of blindly on the side so we don't just shoot nails kind of blindly and then we have nails sticking out of the wood. We definitely don't want that. So you can see that line now has a mark and a measurement for us to measure down from on both sides so they are even, they level up and our, our stand doesn't wobble at all. You just take your brad nailer. It is so easy. I know these are a little bit scary, but they are so easy. They don't really kick. They don't make a ton of noise and it will make your building process so much easier. If you don't have one, you can just use plain wood glue even. Just kind of put the wood glue where you want it, tape it down, clamp it down, and that'll actually hold it pretty good too. And then you don't need to use any kind of power tools. You could even use just regular nails and hammer them in. But this is the quickest and easiest way. You can see now I wanna get rid of those pencil marks. So just taking my sander to the lines and they disappear. And then you can see here, we just pop our little planters into those holes and you could leave it as is. If you're gonna put it outside, you definitely wanna seal it so you protect that wood. 
or it had been a while. So I went ahead and stained mine. Grab some nitrile gloves. You definitely want to protect your hands with this. And I'm using Early American Wood Stain Color by Minwax. The way I like to apply stain is just taking a flour sack towel. I get these from Walmart for a big pack of like a ton for like next to nothing. And I cut them apart and then I dip them into the stain directly and just rub it onto the wood. It is so much quicker than painting probably quicker to spray paint. You could definitely spray paint this too, but I definitely would prefer to stain versus paint because it's just so much faster. And then you do wanna let this sit and dry overnight and then it's good to go. How cute is this? So we're finally getting the outdoor backyard and patio starting to get cleaned off for the springtime. So I had a nice little setup here. These are faux plants. Of course, you could do real plants in here too. Succulents would be super cute, kind of like these. And you just pop them in there and then you have a really nice stand. This project really reminded me why I love woodworking so much. And I hope that it inspires you to give it a try too, because the end result is always something so nice. It's something that's gonna last, gonna hold up, and it's something you can definitely be proud of. Now we're gonna head into the Dollar Tree Plus section. I know not everybody has a Dollar Tree Plus, but if you do, this is a great project for you. And hopefully your stores, I know they're hitting a lot, so hopefully they come your way soon. This is an amazing deal though. It is $3 for a huge 14 inch planter. So if you see these, grab them. You're not gonna find them cheaper anywhere else this size. We're gonna pop open my spray paint tent. It was raining this day, so I propped the door open, popped my tent up in my workshop. I always throw a Lazy Susan in there too. You can see my tent is well loved. <laughs> it's gotten a lot of spray paint time. And this is how big that planter is. $3, you guys, what a great deal. So we're gonna take this. I wasn't a fan of the orange terracotta. You can always leave it that color if you want. I wanted more of a contemporary look. So taking some oil rub bronze spray paint to it, the lip on the Lazy Susan, it kind of sets the, the thing in there a little bit. So I spray painted the bottom edge first and then went around the outside edge. And then of course the inside edge a little bit too, just to get down in there. Didn't want to see any of that orange poking out, peeking out. So went ahead, did this with one coat, let it sit for about 15 minutes, came back and did a second coat. Here's the transformation. If you're gonna use it outside, which you can, just give it a clear coat of spray paint and let that sit before you add anything in there. I'm using mine inside. I'm gonna add this other Dollar Tree, regular Dollar Tree planter to the inside here. Flipped it upside down. And I'm gonna use it as a little bit of a raised tier thing so that way I can put my uh, olive tree down in there, give it some height. We're going to take some leftover burlap fabric that I have and tuck it down in there. You could use a blanket, you could use a towel, basically just kind of adding some bulk in there because we're also gonna be putting some Spanish moss on top. This is also from Dollar Tree. I grabbed two packs. It looks pretty condensed when you pull it out, but once you start pulling the Spanish moss apart, you're gonna get a lot more full of a look. So two did it for this tree. Make sure to give the moss a good fluff. You don't want it too flat. And then that's all there is to it. Just a quick $3 planter update with some spray paint turned into a really nice high-end looking planter for my tree. Next, we're gonna grab one of these really nice looking planters. They are $5, but I felt like for the nice style that they were, it was actually a really good price point for these. But wait till you see what we do with them. We're also gonna grab some River Rocks from Dollar Tree. They have black ones, they have neutral ones. Grab you some of those. I grabbed five packs in the neutral tone. We're gonna turn this planter into a fountain and it is so fun. I would suggest getting a bigger planter though, probably would help and I'll show you why at the end, but we're gonna keep going with this. We're gonna take another Dollar Tree planter, put it in the bottom upside down, just like we did with the tree in the last project, grab a Dollar Tree pool noodle and I was so excited to come across this pool noodle knife. I have been waiting for them to hit my Dollar Trees, finally did, testing it out here for you and it totally 
works. Of course you can use a regular knife, but I like that I didn't need to put down any kind of cutting mat under it because it's not gonna hurt your work surface. So I'm just cutting down the pool noodles into smaller sizes and stuffing them down into this planter. I do wanna say we're gonna be putting rocks on the top there. So you don't want the holes facing up. You want them turned to the side because we're gonna cover up as much of that empty space as we can with the pool noodles. I even cut some down smaller and then cut those in half to fill up any kind of holes and gaps. So here's what it looks like when I got it pretty well covered in there. Then we're going to add our fountain. I found mine on Amazon. This one did not work. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description box of the one not to get and then the one to get and I'll show you the one that works here in a little bit. But at this point, I didn't know it wasn't gonna work. So we're gonna continue on and then I'll show you the one that does work in the end. So we're just gonna take our river rock from Dollar Tree and we're going to lay that right on top. Like I said, I needed about five packs of these to cover up the pool noodles and the fountain in there to get good coverage and also hold our fountain and cord down. So I put water in there and these are solar powered and it didn't matter what I did, the, it just never did work. So I went ahead, reordered a new one from Amazon, put it together, it's got suction cups on the bottom so it actually suctioned right down onto the planter that's in the inside there that you don't see because there's rocks on the top and it holds it in place. And the cool thing about these fountains is they come with different attachments. So you can get different spray fountain effects, which I show you whenever I go to test this, so you can see it in this video. So that was pretty cool. And it's got suction cups on the bottom. So they just fit right down onto that planter, cover it up with some rocks, cover the cording up with the rocks too, to kind of hide that. And then this one actually came with two different options. It came with the solar panel and it also came with a USB. So if you want it constantly on, plug it in with the USB. If you want it, on a sunny day, you do the sun, do the solar panel. And here I am attaching the solar panel and then listen to my reaction. <laughs> so the thing about the solar panel is it just depends on how much light is hitting it, how much pressure is going through that pump. So the more you put it in the sun, the lower your fountain is going to be. As you can see, I'm kind of testing it here. And the more in the sun it is, the more full blast it is. So it just kind of depends on what time of the day it is, what pressure it's gonna be. And it was just kind of fun to test it out and play with it. And then also test out the different caps that went on there to change the fountain um, feature. I didn't expect this to be such a big fountain. So I would say I would recommend a larger pot for this. Maybe you have a larger one. You use that $3 one that was larger from Dollar Tree for this, but it was still super fun to do. You could put it in a bird bath um, and you could really turn anything into a fountain. So I will link the fountain down in the description box below. You can find it on Amazon. Here's the one that did not work. So if you're looking for other options, don't get the solar lights that look like this or the solar panels that look like this. Get the ones that have the white around them. I don't know what it was about mine, if it was defective or what, but I will link the good one down in the description box. Um, but this is fun. I think I'm gonna get a bigger pot and we're gonna put it in the corner on our porch. And these are probably the coolest planters that Dollar Tree carries. They're these three containers that kind of stack in the middle. They've had them in years past, but this year they had three sizes. So they had a medium and a small. The smaller one has a set of three with them. I have two projects to share with you for these. We're gonna use these planters in a really unique way. We need to add some weight to them. So I'm using some of those leftover river rocks and I'm putting some of those in the bottom one, stacking the middle one, putting some more river rocks in that one. And then we're gonna stack the last one on top. You can, or you don't have to put river rocks in this one. I did not. And this is what it's gonna look like, but I took them apart again. We're going to make sure they're extra secure, adding some hot glue. You could do super glue if you wanted, if you really wanted them permanent. This is just gonna kind of help them from toppling over. Then we're gonna take this mini terracotta pot, which is also from Dollar Tree, which seems to be about the right size to fit in the middle. So we're gonna use this for an organization 
tower. Let's call it that organization tower. So you could put so many different things in here. Of course, I love organizing craft supplies. So we're going to do that. Adding some paintbrushes, markers, pens, some scissors right in the top. And look how cute this turned out. Not only is it functional, easy to grab things. You can put on a lazy Susan and make it even more easily accessible, but it looks super cute too. This would also be great on a vanity for your makeup, makeup brushes, in an office for your office supplies, or even in a kitchen on your counter for kitchen utensils or things like spices. Now we're gonna use these in a unique way. Instead of putting them on your countertop, we're going to take these apart and put them on the wall so they're more vertical. It's gonna be super cool and it's super easy too. We're gonna take a drill with a larger drill bit and we're gonna drill right down into the center bottom of each one of these planters. And then you just wanna make sure those holes are big enough that a screw is gonna fit in there. I'm using one and a quarter inch drywall screws to screw these right into the wall. And you can see here, now we have a planter that is now affixed to the wall, which is super trendy and fun. You could do this with tons of them since they are super cheap. Buy bigger sizes, buy smaller sizes, mix them up. Be so cute on a patio, on a fence outside, or if you have you know, a cool trendy vibe. You can put this inside too. We're just gonna fill those holes with some Dollar Tree styrofoam. If you're gonna do this with real plants then you wanna use dirt, obviously. And then you can start filling up the styrofoam with whatever plants that you wanna put in there. So I had some viney kind of stuff from Hobby Lobby left over. I'm just adding that in there and then headed to Dollar Tree. They have tons of succulents to choose from. So I grabbed several of those. Also the added those into the planners too. You can also use a little bit of hot glue that'll help hold everything in there. And then I had a lot of the green styrofoam still showing through. So out comes the Spanish moss again. We're gonna use that to cover up the foam and any kind of gaps. I absolutely love the organic green natural look that this gives off. I've seen plant walls before and they get really, really expensive. So this is a great way to keep things budget friendly and it's easy to change things out if you need a new fresh look. These were such fun projects to make and I hope they inspired you. I also wanna thank you for hanging on and watching to the end of this video with me. I also wanna give you a big, big thank you in advance if you head over to thedailydiywire.com to check out my brand new website and blog. If I could give you all a hug for your support, I definitely would. Also, don't forget to sign up for the free, 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 free newsletter that'll also have some extra content and freebies in there for you. You can do that by clicking the link in the description box, or there's even places on the dailydiywire.com website where you can sign up over there. If you could leave me a rainbow emoji down in the comments below to show your support. Also hit that thumbs up button that helps out the Daily DIY channel so, so much and big hugs all around to all of you. I wanna thank you all so, so much again, and I am wishing you a very creative day. See you in the next one.